Oh my gosh. Hi everyone. So I'm going to do a I guess week update on my shadow work. I just finished uh, several exercises like not more than a couple minutes ago and it kind of really freaked me out. <laughs> um, I started by shadow work for sure on the first of this month and I'm probably not going to do any more until after this weekend because I have an event this weekend and I don't think I can handle doing any more. I need like a little bit of a break. Um, but I have my stage burning and stuff like that because I just, I just needed some negativity to go away. <laughs> All right, so um, I told you guys that I was working um, with a um, workbook. Well, it's not really a workbook. It's a book um, that has to do with uh, shadow work. And I have forgotten where it's at. I'm going to have to go grab it because I think I left it where I was doing my actual work. So bear with me while I bring you on my little journey here through my house to my area for my book. <laughs> All right. Um, so this was really hard for me. Like the first couple exercises weren't that hard. Really, they weren't. And I did some self-imposed exercises as well just to get started, okay? No big deal. Just get started, get myself set where I need to be. Um, like in the right frame of mind and really aware and stuff like that. So the book I'm working with is The Dark Side of Light Chasers. And it's by Debbie Ford. All right. I am just this far in. Okay. I've only done the first few chapters. I'm currently getting ready to do chapter four, but won't be until after this weekend. So I've done the first beginning chapters, but... If you're doing shadow work and you want to know how to do it and you want to know what you're doing and all this other stuff, um, I'm going to do a disclaimer right now and tell you that you don't want to do shadow work if you are not in the right frame of mind to do it. It's hard. And I'm not kidding. It's hard. If you, uh, if you do not have a good support system, it's not going to work out well for you. If you are an extremely negative person and always down on yourself, it's not going to work out for you. Um, you have to be willing to accept bad parts of yourself and see bad parts of yourself and not be able to judge yourself at the same time, which to be perfectly honest, was a little difficult. <laughs> so shadow work, in case anybody's wondering, and since this is my first video on shadow work, um, is basically originally an idea by, uh, Carl Jung, who, um, stated that we have a shadow self, a self that we do not keep bringing up, okay? We, there's things that we repress. It's like having a bunch of rooms when you're a little kid and in your mind and you go through all these rooms and you're in wonder and you're innocent and you don't know any better. So you say whatever you want to say when somebody happens to be there. That's why little kids point out zits on your face or, you know, all these other things. Or, you know, if somebody looks fat, they just say, hey, she's fat. That kids have no filter. They really don't until they learn how to have a filter. But that's also a repression. All these little rooms in there in your brain when you're a little kid and you're innocent is, you know, the room where you're allowed to say whatever you want, where you're allowed to do all these different things, where you're allowed to see all these different things, and you're allowed to think all these different things. But as we grow up and people tell us what is expected out of us and what society expects and what is right and wrong, we slowly start closing those doors. And that's what she talks about in this book. Anyways, um, so if you want to know more about that, definitely get the book. It's very informative. It really, really is. Anyways, um, basically it's those repressions. That's your shadow, shadow self. It's all that stuff you're repressing over the years. And, you know, when you're a teenager, you're still working on, you know, what's allowed and what's not allowed. So shadow work isn't really good for teens either. You know, you want to be, you probably want to start this 20s and later. You know, just because your brain is still forming, your brain is still doing a lot of different things, even in your teens, even in your late teens. Um, so I wouldn't recommend it for late teens either, okay? However, I do think that it is an important thing for people to do. So if you're interested in shadow work, 
start researching. There's plenty of YouTubers out there who talk about it. There's a lot of different kinds of books on the actual psychology of shadow work and Carl Jung because he was, he was back, I think he was friends with Freud back in the day, way back when. They had a falling out or something like that. But anyways, um, it's, it's a psychological thing. It's, you know, it's real, it's psychological, and it's under nonfiction <laughs> in the library. So anyways, um, what I did to start out to get myself ready, and if you want to do this, feel free. Like, these are the, just the steps that I took. This is what has been working for me. And if it works for you, all the better, okay? First, I got myself a book just specifically for it. And then on the inside, I did, um, I told myself what shadow work was. Like, I have this whole thing about Carl Jung right here. And um, I told myself the good things, you know, that the shadow work is an unraveling, you know, I remind myself that I have to acknowledge aspects, that um, I don't need to rationalize anything, that I don't need to criticize or judge myself, I just need to acknowledge and feel and move forward through it, that I need to be compassionate with myself, and I need to be honest with myself, and those are starred things, because shadow work is really, really hard, and you're getting to know your, your darker self through it, and I think it's important to remember that that's not the only part of you. The dark part's not the only part of you, and the light part's not the only part of you. You have good and bad aspects, and all of those are you. All of them, not just one, all of them. It's, you know, being the best friend and also being the person who takes out revenge. It's, you know, being somebody's greatest love and also being somebody's greatest torment. You are all of those things. And she talks about that in this book, too. And she has a really great story in there about a guy who's talking about how he accepts that he is everything because that's essentially what you are. Each person, individually, is made up of every single emotion, every single action, because we are all capable of doing it. We're all capable. It's a possibility. So, um, and if you're made up of everything, then that also means that the things you don't like about other people, that's you, too. And that's shadow work. So, anyways... Um, I remind myself I'm not a weak or a bad person just because I'm doing this, just because I express it, or just because I feel it. And believe me, there was a lot of feeling in here. Then I did a five-minute free fall. And a five-minute free fall is basically where I put a timer on my phone for five minutes. And I just wrote, I just like brain dumped everything I thought about shadow work. It didn't matter what it was. It, it didn't matter if it was impressions. It didn't matter if it was something I was afraid of. It didn't matter if it was stuff other people told me. Everything that was on my brain in five minutes went there, okay? But I had shadow work on as the intent of writing. So if you're gonna do the five minute free fall, make sure you are focused on the actual shadow work. Like you know that you want to free fall on shadow work. You're not free falling on school. You're not free falling on, you know, your random creations or something like that it's specific to shadow work that intent for the free fall needs to be there so that you know everything that you're thinking about shadow work specifically okay the next thing that i did was suggested by somebody that i found on youtube and i can't remember who because i watched a lot of youtube videos was that you ask um your friend your close friends and family about your less than desirable attributes because people can see your not so good sides, even if you're trying to hide them. As a matter of fact, I think that the more you try to hide them, the more people probably see them. Even if you're lying to yourself, other people still see it. So anyways, and you have to keep an open mind. When you're asking people this stuff about you, you can't get mad at them. You're asking. You're asking for it. So be prepared to get what you ask for. Anyways, I'm going to give you some of mine so that you can kind of see what to expect. I asked close friends, close family, um, my kids, uh, my grandma, some a couple really good friends, and I was told that um, I'm bad with conflict, and that's a real downside. It's a it's a less than desirable attribute. That um, I have low self esteem. That I'm not good with any kind of change that I tend to overreact sometimes, depending on situations and people. And 
Oftentimes I will hyper focus on one specific thing. Like I will hyper focus on shadow work or I will hyper focus on tarot cards or I will hyper focus on my kid being sick or I'll hyper focus on my art or I, I tend to get this really concentrated focus that doesn't allow for other things. And that's neither good or bad, but it is part of a less than desirable attribute in me. Um, and I'm nice. And because I don't like conflict, my nicety tends to get me into trouble where I will help people even to my own detriment, which is harmful for me. I'm also a perfectionist and kind of obsessive about it. When I'm doing my creations, then they have to be exactly what I want and I don't give myself room to mess up a whole lot. Um, sometimes I'm scattered um, and I procrastinate too much. Uh, I tend to let other people handle situations if I don't want to handle them. And that's not taking control of my life. That's letting somebody else take control of my life. Um, and I don't take care of myself at all. Uh, I very rarely do what I'm supposed to do exercise wise, eating wise, stuff like that. I do have health concerns and I often don't, um, keep those in mind when I'm doing things. And this was a lot for people to say to me and I had to thank them. I had to say thank you. And that was rough because... When somebody is telling you bad things about yourself or something that is not a nice thing about yourself or something that you don't want to hear, it's hard not to be defensive. But guess what? You asked for it. You don't get to be defensive. That's just how it works. So if you're going to ask people, you get to say thank you and move forward. But I did write it all down, okay? The next thing I did was another one of my own exercises. Um, I wrote down all of the fears I could think of that were really important to my life, things that have affected areas of my life that I knowingly know about, okay? So I'm going to list them for you. I am afraid of conflict. I'm afraid of change. I'm afraid of death. I'm afraid to drive. I'm afraid of spiders. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of being alone. I'm afraid of succeeding. And I'm terrified people will flat out abandon me. Those are some rough fears. Not all of these are crippling fears and not all of them are there all of the time. I have to focus on them. And when I focus on them, I tend to get hyper fearful of them. The people abandoning me one is probably consistent. Being afraid of the dark, change and death, conflict, those are pretty consistent. But, you know, succeeding is just here and there. Like, when I've been procrastinating on my work or something like that, and I'm afraid that even if I that I'll do too well and then I won't have enough pieces. I know it's a really weird thing to fear, but it is something that I do, you know, and I, there's a real fear of myself in there. So anyways, back to my thing here. So now um, on November 1st, I did the first exercises that I came across in the book, okay? And the exercises were good questions and I wrote them down, you know, it's like, what are you most afraid of? What aspects of your life need transforming? What do you need to accomplish? What do you plan to accomplish in reading this book? You know, um, what I'm most afraid someone else will find out about me. What I'm most afraid of finding out about myself. The biggest lie I've ever told myself. The biggest lie I've ever told someone else. And the things that are going to stand in my way to stop me from actually doing shadow work. And I did all of these. I have, you know several pages of these and I will read a couple of them to you. So what am I most afraid of? I am afraid of losing everything and everyone in my life, having nothing, having no one, being nothing and being no one. I'm afraid my whole world is going to burn to the ground around me. Maybe because I do or say something to make it happen because I'm not enough to make it work or keep it together. I'm afraid the people I love most will leave or die and my life won't be good or safe anymore that those I love want to be with me because I can't be per that they won't want to be with me because I can't be a perfect wife or a perfect mom wow sorry guys this is hard for me but I feel like I need to get it out there and that I feel like other people can um gain from this from not the knowledge of how to do this and how it affects you I'm not going to read all these to you because, you know, this is my personal stuff. I'm only going to do the ones that are important. Um, 
Let's see, what's the biggest lie I've ever told myself? That I love myself. I really don't. And that's something that I had to find out while I was doing these exercises, and that was rough. It was. All right, so then um, the next one I did, the next set of exercises that I just completed doing was, um, it was three different exercises, and I had to meet my higher sacred self, I had to meet my shadow self, and then I had to let my sacred self and shadow self meet, which was interesting. Um, neither bad nor good, but interesting. So in the book, she had me create a, like, sacred garden. Somewhere in my brain I can go to meditate, feel safe, and be safe, and bring these things to me in a good way, okay? So meeting my higher self, I had to go to my little secret garden. You know, I had to do my meditations. And these don't take, these aren't five-minute meditations, guys. These are not five minutes, ten minutes here or there. I spent an hour each time doing these exercises. That's how long it took me to do it. I'm really not good at meditation, so if you're better at meditation, it might take you a little less time. But the truth is, is it took time for me to find these things in myself, okay? It took time because I'd never had to do it before. So anyways, meeting my sacred self. So when I had to meet my sacred self, then I had to write about what she looked like and all this other stuff. So my sacred self honestly has white hair. She has long white hair and it's very, very straight. And she's in this like cotton dress that covers her. You know, it's not, it's not, it doesn't show anything or not show anything. It's kind of just this flowy, really cotton kind of dress and um, white light everywhere. And when she, when I like reached out and like shook her hand in my, in my little meditation, she was so warm, so warm. And it was really cool. Um, and I asked, you know, what I needed to, you know, if that, if my higher sacred self would be with me while I do my shadow work, because it's important to have support in, internally as well as externally. So, um, I asked for that with her and I got to know her a little bit, which I don't need to tell you anything about. Um, my shadow self, that's the one I want to tell you about. You know what? It's always easier to talk about the good things. It's easier to talk about the good sacred self, the pretty one, the one that's, you know, all warm and cozy and makes you feel safe, right? That's not what this is about. This is about shadow work and it's about the deep dark parts. It's about the parts I don't want to look at and that's what I'm trying to get out and my higher self is helping me but that's not my main focus. My higher self is going to help me um, integrate my shadow self. It's going to help me work on it and love it and be aware of it. So the second one was meeting my shadow self and I had to go down to the deepest darks. In my meditation, I had to go dark. I had to go into a cave. I had to go find my most awful self in this cave and I had to write down what the cave looked like, what I looked like, you know, I had to do the worst aspect of myself that I could possibly envision. And then I had to allow a word to come up about my worst possible self, one word that I would use to describe or see or whatever. And honestly, I came up with tormented because that's what it, that's what she is. She's tormented. She's Lonely and scared and cold and angry, vengeful, evil. I mean, all, uh, there's a lot, holy cow. But my shadow self is like this crippling person who is like crunched up on the floor. And she's, her hair is matted with spiders crawling in it. Her teeth are rotten. Um, emotions like roll across her face like... First, you know, when I looked at her, there was just revenge, so much hate, so much anger. And then there was loneliness and sadness. I couldn't even continue looking in her eyes, you know. And there was so many spiders, so oh my gosh, and there was so cold. And when I stepped down inside there, this icky, gross, muddy stuff like came up in between my toes because I was barefoot I was, as I was walking to her. And she was scratching something into the stone. I still don't know what she was scratching into the stone. But I watched her and I tried to, to allow, allow this being, this really awful part of myself. I tried to just be in the moment with her and it was really hard. 
So I, I addressed it by reminding myself that it's a part of me and I need sympathy there. I need to try to look and understand and work with her, uh, not judge her, not be criticized of her and not overwhelm her with that. So I just walked around her. I, uh, I stayed close, but not too close. I didn't touch her. I didn't talk to her. I just watched. And, you know, when she grinned at me, it was not a fun grin. It was ugly and icky. And she just kept scratching into the stone. I have no idea what she was scratching. And then the word tormented came up. And then awful things happened. Awful things happened. Like this, I was already in a cave and there was this darkness that was really heavy inside the cave. But once that word came up and I was getting ready to leave because I'd gotten my word and that was the exercise was to get my word. Um, it came after me, dude. I can't even explain it. Like, I have awful nightmares of things coming to get me. Awful, awful nightmares. Like, so bad that I will be pushed off the bed. I don't like remember my remembering my dreams because of it. I refuse to remember them. But that's what this felt like is this serious oppression, like, inside me. Like, so, so heavy. And it was dark and it was coming for me. Like, flat out coming for me. And it terrified me, so I ran. I ran for my light. I ran for my sacred space. I ran for anything that was not the darkness. And the door closed right as it came up on me, and I had to take a couple deep breaths and remind myself I'm okay. That this is okay, and that that part of me wants to come out, and I just need to address it little by little, not all at once. So I let it go, because that's all I could do, is just let it go. But I kind of panicked a little bit, honestly. And it's the part of myself that I'm most afraid of. I know it is. And I don't know that this experience will be the same for everybody else. But this was my experience with shadow work so far this week. So then, on a better note, ending this, um, I did the next exercise, which was in that three-part exercise where my shadow self and my sacred self come together. And that was really hard, too, because um, when I went to back to meditate to uh, go back to my, my special garden, the one that I feel safe in, the warm one, the one that has all the butterflies and the frogs and the water and the birds and my sacred higher being that's in white light and warm and gave me all good happies. When I tried to remeditate, like that darker cave kept like flitting back and forth into my mental space and I had to like really concentrate on my breathing and readjust my level of thinking to get back into a good area so that I could recreate that space that I'm safe in in my brain in order to do this exercise and I think this exercise probably took me the longest just because I had to keep going back into my meditation keep going back into saying I'm safe keep going back into saying I'm okay keep going back into saying you're, you know, this is an acceptance, no judgment, no, you know, you are not a bad person, you are not an evil person, this is just another part, another aspect of the being you really are. So, finally, I was able to get back into my sacred space, and I got my shadow self and my sacred self together, and when I left them in my brain, they were holding hands, not looking at me, but they were, you know, they were holding hands, and and being all warm and fuzzy with each other. She's not talking, the, the darker self is not talking in any shape, way, shape, or form. And she was still scratching into the stone even when she came up to my nicer garden. She still just continues to scratch in the stone. I'm not really sure what she's scratching. But in whole, for this first week, I feel like I've gotten somewhere. I've learned things about myself that I wasn't willing to look at before. And I think that's part of shadow work. And it's the deep, dark, dirty part of shadow work. These first steps are the hard ones. They're the ones that take the longest. They're the hardest. And I haven't, you know, I, I'm just learning how to do it. And so it's new to me. And some of it's a lot harder than other things. You know, it was easy for me to hear people tell me things about myself. That was easy. But when I had to look at myself, that was hard. That was really, really hard, guys. But that was my first week of shadow work. And I'm not going to do like every single week of shadow work with you, I don't think. Um, I'll do them periodically as I 
feel like I can give something to other people who are doing shadow work and then I will create a video about it and and tell you about what I'm working on and how I'm doing it and I will I am going to give a review of this book um, when I'm done with it but it might be a while because this is not easy shit flat out it's not easy okay just not easy so be prepared to not have it easy because it's not easy and um, I'm going to continue on with it. It didn't matter how scared I was. I knew that I wanted to keep going forward. I keep wanting to move forward. And, and I'm going to. So uh, I just need a little bit of a break. And then I'll be okay again. So thank you guys for listening. I hope this video will help somebody with their shadow work. Um, if you want to pick up the book, pick up the book. It is really good so far. Um, I haven't started using any tarot with my shadow work just yet. But I do plan to in the future. So for now, it's just this book and my journaling and little exercises and getting to know myself, and then I'll continue to move forward. So thanks so much for listening. I hope this has helped, and I will be doing more videos on shadow work as I go. Be safe. 